uh, I wanted to just, uh, we ran through this really quickly, and, and so I want to make sure that we, we, you guys got the instructions for the sort of part two of the assignment that we're working on. So we started with the, the act of God or natural disaster terminology, right? And, and uh, we went over that. And then we had this other tab that I mentioned really quickly, but just since I did it super quick, a couple of you had questions. So, so the other tab is looking at myths. And <clears throat> we, talked about, we talked about these um, as sort of common myths that are out there in our society about um, a disaster or what happens in the wake of a disaster or how we talk about disasters. Um, and so we translated that into, or I translated that into a couple different columns in that data sheet. So everybody has, has their, um, their disaster. And again, as a reminder, when you guys are doing this, we don't, want, we don't want the ESRM major or the anthro major or the CSUCI student asking this. We want to ask as random Joe public thing, right? So when you do these, when you do these types of assignments, make sure you're in using like DuckDuckGo or Tor browser, something to anonymize so, so it's not, we're not, when you do your search, it's not um, thinking what you want to know. We're looking at more a generic, um, what 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 random people see when they ask these questions. So anyway, so so the the general uh, uh, myths that uh, we have there are that people panic when a disaster happens. Everybody runs around with their head cut off and screams and acts horrible to each other. That kind of stuff. Um, sort of related to that one, but a specific one about economics is that in the wake of a disaster, everybody loots or, or certain neighborhoods will loot and so they'll go and they'll steal televisions and sneakers and that kind of stuff. That absolutely happens, but by and large, what is often described as looting is usually people that just don't have access to some basic need like water or food and are trying to get food. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and then a very common one of this lone hero or lone bad guy. So the lone hero that is the person that is, you know, going in and, and, uh, and, and through individual action um, has some great outcome. And then the opposite side, by doing some bad, um, usually it's something like an evil apartment owner that's chained the, chained the emergency exits closed or something like that, and then many people die in the fire kind of thing. Um, uh, we'll hear those types of stories. Um, then after, after, the, after the event is played out, after you know, a few days or weeks or so, there'll be this sort of notion that survivors are just passive and survivors are, are um, so-called quote unquote takers, and they're just sitting around not doing anything, waiting for someone else to help them. That's, that is virtually never true. Everybody. Is, is usually has a lot of self-agency and, and uh, doing stuff. Um, that disease outbreaks are always gonna happen. Disease outbreaks absolutely do happen in the wake of disasters, but um, they by no means are inevitable. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> and then it's possible to return to normalcy quickly. You'll see this a lot from the victims of the disasters. In a lot of these television interviews, of they'll, they'll stick a microphone in somebody's hand. They're like, oh, I just want to get back to the way things were. I just, you know, I just can't wait to, you know, da da da, da. And, and that's rarely, I mean, a small impact, an emergency, small disaster, maybe. But for anything of significant size and scale, it's, it's virtually impossible for stuff to go back to the way they were quickly. Um, other ones is that, uh, sort of related to that, is that the best outcome is to make it, make, we should be all working to make stuff exactly like it was before. This is a, this is a major contention, especially in communities that have been historically marginalized. And so, uh, so uh, it's probably not a good idea. It's probably a better idea to figure out how we can do stuff better. But also, as we just mentioned, um, we want to, um, avoid this problem in the future as much as we can, right? So we, we probably don't want to return to pre-disaster. We want to return to something better than, than pre-disaster. Um, another very common one is that, that there's nefarious actors that are just all about stealing money. And so all this money that uh, Angelina's question about government funding, that there's some people that just are said they're going to steal it all or, or, or embezzle it all or go do something we don't like, go do drugs with it or something like that, right? And, and you'll hear that way, 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 way overblown. So much overblown that that's driven many, that, that currently drives much of our post-disaster policy. Um, um, and, then, uh, uh, the, and then increasingly we're seeing this weird conspiracy th stuff that this was all a plan or somebody intentionally set the fire. There is arson, absolutely, but, 
but that like somebody intentionally set this fire for some political goal or some economic goal or something like that. Um, and then very commonly we'll hear that outsiders are buying up property post-disaster. That does happen, but it's usually not for the reasons that, that are described. So the, the reasons are usually some, there's, there's some bad actor that's waiting in the wings. And after the disaster happens, they're going to come in like vampires and, and suck off all the, the high-end properties or the, the, the pretty places or something like that. In reality, it's for these things we just mentioned that it is just oftentimes very difficult financially to rebuild from a massive disaster, from a total disaster of your property. And as a consequence, it ends up being sometimes people sell the property off. But, but rarely is it that we have these sort of evil people like, you know, twiddling their mustaches and like, you know, tapping their fingers together going, um, it just doesn't work that way usually. Um, and then a very common one, you'll hear, oh, we had no idea. Really? Maui burns every 80 years. We had no idea. Really? Paradise burned before. We had no idea. Really? Um, you know, we've, we have fires in Ventura County all the time. Um, so. So that is virtually um, a signal that people are ignorant or intentionally trying to avoid responsibility. We hear people say that. Um, and then lastly, as we just mentioned, that the, the, the sort of myth that insurance will take care of everything. Again, it sometimes can under some conditions. I'm not saying people shouldn't have insurance. You should have insurance. Um, but, but the notion that insurance will be the answer in and of itself is basically a myth. Okay. Questions about that? Questions about that stuff? So, so, so that, that was sort of like uh, the last couple of days is sort of like laying the, the big picture. Yeah. Are we, finding, are we finding new stories that are like related to the topic that we were given on the previous? Uh, it doesn't have to be. So, so for, the, for that tab two, it's, everybody has a, a disaster. But it's a disaster, and that's it. So, so if it, you could you, you could possibly recycle it or, 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 or use that same disaster, that's cool. But it it could be an independent grab too. So, are there situations where a corporation or something intentionally does create disasters? Oh, so the question is: is there is there do we have an example of of like a major group intentionally um, encouraging a disaster? Um, there must be. That's a great question. I should probably think about that. There must be. I can't think of one. Um, uh, there. I, well, so I, I would say that there's oftentimes, and this gets the culpability and legal things, but um, oftentimes people know that that. I mean, they don't, they don't maybe cause a fire, but they know there's th that their structure, let's say, their, their building is maybe vulnerable to fire, and they choose to, there's a pathway they could choose to sort of make it more resistant to fire, but maybe that costs more money, or they could choose to just like put it up kind of thing. And so I, I wouldn't say that's the same as them intentionally causing a disaster. I'd say, but, but that is much more common where people, um, opt to, for financial reasons or other reasons, opt to not do all the protections that were potentially available to them at the time. Um, and that, and that, that's public policy. So that, that comes into law, and that's why we have building standards and things of that nature. Yeah, John. Yeah, great question. So the question with, with like, say, toxic waste and things like that. Um, in the case of the DDT, <clears throat> the reason why the highest concentration in the world of environmental DDT is right off of our coast here uh, is because the, the largest producer of DDT in the world was, was in Los Angeles. And at the end of each day, they would literally wash down, uh, rinse the, um, the equipment down that made the, the pesticide. And then that would go into a drain in the floor, and that drain would go into the storm drain. <clears throat> so it wouldn't go into any kind of sanitary treatment, or they just go, and then that would go. In the case of LA, it went to the White's Point Outfall um, off of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And that's why the sediments there are massively enriched with DDT. In addition, when people took other stuff and, and, and like, like physically cleaned up stuff that like wasn't, wasn't washed downable, um, they, uh, for a time, they put them in barrels and jetted and just threw them in the ocean. 
Um, and so we look at that now and go like, what the hell, right? But that's how we dispose of most of our, for many decades, that's how we dispose of most of our radioactive material, same exact way, 55 gallon drums, dump them off at the Farallons and other places. Um, up until the mid 90s, it was legal for cruise ships, for, for ships, all ships of all types tra traversing the ocean to just throw your garbage, you know, bag up your garbage and just throw it overboard. Um, so, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't have been doing that. That's, that's bad to be clear. That's, that's, that's dumbass is a technical term. Um, but it wasn't necessarily illegal when they did that. Once, once they, we, we required stuff to go to sanitary landfills, in that case, some actors continued to dump. Um, but that's a, that's a small, it, in the grand scheme of things, that's a small amount of the pollution that got out there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't know the particular story of why, that, why the, that company or companies did that dumping, but it did go on for at least some amount of time afterwards. Um, and so there are always bad actors, to be clear. There's always some, some jerks, there's always some people. But what we'll see is, and those are real, I don't want to dismiss the fact that these guys dumped DDT, but, but the bigger issue are, is the systemic stuff, the stuff that goes on every day, the stuff that goes on in and out, the stuff that goes on in all the neighborhoods. And that's the bigger issue that we should be thinking about. Totally can happen, absolutely. I, th I think it's very similar to the fraud story. So I, I guarantee that did happen. I, I don't know any, so everybody tells me, so I, in the last few weeks, hundreds of people have told me that. And then when I ask them, can you show me an example? Nobody can show me an example, right? So there's a huge fear, and, and I don't wanna minimize that fear. I understand it's a very real fear, especially for cultures that have been, you know, people from afar have come in and taken stuff from them, you know, um, for centuries. Um, but as far as how much is actually happening, I don't see much of it actually happening. Um, right, for example, right now, or when our students were there, only the last day were there, the very first property was clear, in Lahaina at least, the very first private property was cleared of debris. So people can't even get in to see what is you know, do I need to put in new water lines? Do, you know, do I need to pour a new foundation? Like, to even talk about rebuilding, it's, it's too early. So, so to say that people are coming in and, and buying those properties up right now, I, I just don't, it, it's a real concern. It could happen, but, and I'm sure somebody has done that somewhere, um, but as far as that's a major thing, I don't, I don't see that. And, and everybody is very attuned to that. So the mayor, the governor, um, uh, 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 local groups, everybody is, is on it. Um, in fact, one of the things we were gonna do in Hawaii was to fly some of our drones over people's properties to help them understand what the damage was. And everybody said, at the last minute, said, we don't want you to do it. Um, because they were afraid, even though they were planning on rebuilding their home, they were afraid that people would see the drones in the air and think that we were like some mainland, um, you know, uh, real estate firm or something that was like sussing out places to buy. And so, so um, yeah, I, I just, I, I don't see that as much. Um, I, the commercial properties, I don't know. So where people had a restaurant, uh, perhaps some of that has happened where the local owner of the restaurant has said, there's no way I'm gonna be able to rebuild and maybe sold to like a international, you know, to Carl's Jr. or something like that. Um, I've not heard of that, but I think that's that's probably more that that's more likely to happen. I think than the than the um, individual homes, at least at this point.